Greetings fellow shoe enthusiasts, Ed Budd here. I'm back with another running shoe yay or nay for you today. Thanks for joining us again guys. A couple of news announcements for you. Over the next couple of days, you will see some of the Ed Bird merchandise appear on the YouTube channel. There's a couple of different t-shirts available, a long sleeve shirt, and the very special Earth Credits mug. I'll be expanding some of the items that are available over the next few days and weeks, so do keep checking back if there's something you're particularly interested in. I hope you like the designs. I wanted to try and get something out before Christmas so people can put them under their trees. We've got a few new shoes incoming this week as well, hoping to be testing those out towards the end of the week. All right, let's get started with the running shoe, yay or nay. First shoe up today on the yay or nay is the Puma Ultra Ride. This is one that's passed me by a little bit, but the more and more I read about it, the more intrigued I become. Firstly, I'm loving the Optimus Prime vibes on this colorway of the shoe. It's the ultimate Optimus Prime shoe. At a price of 85 Earth credits as well. It's not bad. We've got a mesh based upper here and what appears to be lace loops on either side of the shoe. Although they do look a little bit like fly wires too. Should provide some reasonable lock over the top of the foot. Puma have got their pro foam here in the midsole. And there's what I believe to be a TPU plate sandwiched within that midsole too. The foam is listed as a high rebound EVA, so it'll be interesting to see just how squashy it is. That TPU plate appears to be mainly there for stability, although it might provide a little bit of propulsion. I think the most striking feature about the outsole here is how much of the foam they've actually hollowed out. They've tried to keep the weight down and that's a good thing. I've been struggling a little bit in the Mizuno Wave Rider Neo. It's just a little bit too heavy for me for easy days. So I'm hoping perhaps that the Ultra Ride could be a little bit lower in terms of weight. Apparently for a UK 8, it's about 243 grams, which is about 8.6 ounces. So in my size, it probably won't be too bad. There's a 12 mil drop here, so it's not gonna be one for going slug slow. I think it's really designed for pace and it hasn't got too much of a stack height there either 24 in the heel and 12 mil in the forefoot i think at this price i'm prepared to spin the wheel and take a gamble on it so i'm going to say a yay for the puma ultra ride but only in the optimus prime colorway running shoe company 361 are set to launch a carbon plate shoe in very early 2021 you know 2021 that year that everybody's looking forward to Though this shoe does look very much like another shoe that we've seen before. I wonder if you can guess what shoe that is. This one's called the Flame. It's set to hit the shelves in spring and certainly that new Quick Flame midsole material could spring you to a PR. Let's hope it isn't flammable though. I've seen a price of 160 Earth credits quoted for this one. That's US Earth credits. So certainly a very reasonable price for a carbon plate shoe. A very low weight quoted for the US size 9 of 209 grams, 7.4 ounces. No heavy vibes here. It looks a little bit like a mishmash of that Ekaden version of the Next Percent. And also there's a little sprinkling of Socony and Dorfin Pro in there too. Taking some elements of those shoes isn't a bad thing. They're both excellent options. I'd love to know a few more details about this shoe really before I say yay. Though it does look to tick many of the boxes that runners look to try and fill. Certainly it's down there in terms of weight which is one of the first things. With that weight quoted for the US size 9, it could be in the ballpark, certainly, in terms of the weight of my next percent in the 11.5 UK. I think the all-important outsole setup here is still a bit of a mystery. So until I know a little bit more about this shoe, I'm probably going to say nay. Let's hope we get a few more details from 361 in the near future. You know I'm always open-minded about these things. Once I know a little bit more about the outsole, I might change my mind on that one. Shoe 3. I've seen lots of reviews and information flying about recently on this new ASICS Gel Nimbus Lite 2. Another ASICS shoe here with flight foam and an eight mil drop. We got the typical mesh upper. How many shoes have I got of that type now? ASICS, flight foam, mesh upper. I really hope that the upper's not quite as voluminous as some of the other shoes I've tried from ASICS this year. This one's set to land in early 2021. Although the ASICS website over in America says it's coming out at the end of November. It certainly looks the part, although I'm not entirely convinced it's a massive step from the original version of the shoe. The flight foam here has special holes cut into it, which look remarkably like 
the holes in the fresh foam of the 1080 V10. It's certainly a fresh look in the colorway with the reborn blue and black version. In a US size 9, we got a weight of 258 grams here or 9.1 ounces. So that means it's gonna be way up there in the 300s, I think, for my UK size 11. And at a price of 150 US Earth credits, it's certainly heavy in terms of price too. I've got to be honest, too many ASICS shoes on the books right now. I've got the Evo Ride and the Dynablast that I've got to try and get some miles into before the end of 2020. I think some ASICS fans might get a bit excited about this one if they enjoyed the original iteration of the shoe. But sadly for me, I think it's going to be a nay on the ASICS Gel Nimbus Lite 2. Shoe 4. Another ASICS shoe next in name of the Hyperspeed. I've got to be honest, this shoe looks incredibly close in terms of profile to the Meta Racer. It's certainly a shoe that's got a bit of a buzz, appeared on the scene very recently. Although there have been loads of versions of it in the past, it seemed to disappear, but ASICs have bought it back from the dead, like some sort of shoe zombie. It's certainly got the minimalists excited. It's got a very simple setup, this one. A lower drop of five mil, similar to the Rocket X that I've been trying out recently from Hoka Oni Oni and it's super light as well with that US size 9 coming in at 210 grams that's 7.4 ounces a very simple shoe here that's perhaps lacking a little bit in rigidity might be a little bit more flexible than that Meta Racer you can even see the back panels there are weight relieved very similar to the aforementioned shoe very very close to its orange and red brother a couple of internet sources suggest this one's going to retail for about 90 dollars which is around about 70 pounds here or earth credits so i think people that are in the market for a very low down fast responsive race flat style shoe it could be worth a roll of the dice i think i'm gonna say a yay on the a6 hyperspeed i do like those very low weight super responsive shoes seem to work really well for me i really love the sl20 for example this morning i went out to run some easy miles and just smashed it because just feels so good in that shoe. I love that responsive feel. Perhaps when the legs are feeling good. Okay, that's all the footwear under review today in the running shoe, yay or nay. Do remember that this isn't me saying this shoe's great, this shoe's terrible. It's whether I'm gonna test the shoes out in the future. And I'm always open to have my mind changed as well. You know that. Let me know what you think on the four shoes featured today down in the comments. Another Christmas film recommendation. Someone asked me the other day why I've been wearing this strange hat and this strange attire. Well, I'm not sure about the attire, but the hat certainly makes me feel a bit like an elf. That got me watching the old Will Ferrell elf movie. I really love the bit where he makes them some breakfast, which is spaghetti with maple syrup. I've always wanted to try that. Maybe I'll ask Mrs. Edbert to knock me up a whole bowl full of it, and I'll report back to you and let you know how it tastes. Remember, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is to... Yeah, you know how to do it. Every year I think I enjoy this film a little bit more. It's quite a moving tale, I think. It does make you realise that, you know, you've got to keep that childish bit of you. Never let go of that. I think at Christmas it's easy to say, oh, it's for the kids. But it's not. It's for everybody. I think the part in the film where he decorates the department store as well is absolutely superb. It is a true Christmas grotto. Certainly one of my favourites, this one. Go and check it out. The classic film, Elf. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video today, guys. I very much appreciate it. Remember that merchandise should be live in the next day or so, so keep your eyes peeled. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch the new videos. It really does help the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.